Chapter 41, verse 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. With this verse, Isaiah is inviting us to meditate about the current events taking place in the present time. I believe 
that God's message to us during this time is that we remain in togetherness with God and one another in love and faith. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I children's sermon um, because the theme is actually very fitting for what's going on in today's situation. It also teaches us a bit of history. The theme um, today is glorifying God in every situation. Scotty, uh, you want to share? The uh, scripture today is uh, John 9, uh, 1 through 13. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. His disciples asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents' sins. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent him. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light for the world. After he said this, Jesus spat on the ground and made some mud with the spittle. He rubbed the mud on the man's eyes and told him, Go and wash your face in the pool of Siloam. This name means scent. So the man went, went, washed his face, and came back seeing. His neighbors then and the people who had seen him begging before this asked, 
Is this the man who used to sit and beg? Someone said, he is the one. But others said, no, he isn't. He just looks like him. So the man himself said, I am the man. How is it that you can see now? They asked him. He answered, the man called Jesus made some mud, rubbed it on my eyes, and told me to go to Salome and wash my face. So I went, and as soon as I washed, I could see. Where is he? They asked. I don't know, he answered. Then they took to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. So most of us have a favorite hymn. Um, one hymn may be, the, To God Be the Glory, uh, which is a great hymn to praise God. Another hymn may be, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Uh, which tells us how Jesus leads us through the difficult times in our life. And I'm sure this is one of many favorites, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Did you know that all of these hymns have something in common? They were all written by the same person. In fact, there are many hymns in our hymnal written by that person. Her name was Fanny Crosby. Uh, Guy, you want to share a little bit about Fanny? Yes. When Fanny was six weeks old, she had an eye infection. Her regular doctor was out of town and a man posing as a doctor gave her the wrong treatment. Within a few days, she was blind. If that happened to me, I'm afraid that I would be very bitter and I would probably spend a lifetime feeling sorry for myself. Fanny was never bitter and she never felt sorry for herself. When she was only eight years old, she wrote this poem. Oh, what a happy child I am. Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I am blind, I cannot and I won't. So instead of being bitter and feeling sorry for herself, Fanny used these gifts that God had given her to write over 8,000 hymns and poems to praise and glorify God. And Todd, you wanna share uh, this, the uh, scripture story today? One day Jesus was walking with his disciples when they passed by the going in. When they saw him, the disciples asked Jesus, who was to blame for the man's blindness? Was it because of his sin or was it because of his parents' sin? Jesus answered and told them that no one was to blame. He was blind so God can, God's works can be shown in him. Then Jesus healed the man and the people praised and glorified God for his people. What about Fanny Crosby? God didn't heal her blindness, but perhaps if God had healed her, she might have never written all of those beautiful hymns. And the world would have never heard of Fanny Crosby. She used the tragedy of her blindness to glorify God. I pray that tragedy will never come to any of us in our life. But if it does, we should remember that everything that happens can be used to praise and glorify God. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, the difficulties in our life seem small when compared to what others may be facing. Help us not to grumble and complain, but to praise and glorify you in every situation. Amen. Thank you. 
church this is uh, Gerald Janelle and Hedwig and today we wanted to share with you a devotional that we've been doing together it comes from this book Jesus always embracing joy in his presence one of the devotions that really spoke to us um, and that we really took comfort in in this time is um, to strive to live more fully in the present refusing to worry about tomorrow one of the verses I want to share is from Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I think one of the main messages that God is teaching us throughout what's going on in the world is to trust him every day, to, to be able to let go of that false sense of control that we have and for me especially um i need to have control in every aspect of my life and this was just an eye opener for me to know that it's it's not really me but we need to let go and let god do what his will is um in the world and another verse i want to share is from isaiah 41 10 fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you yes i will help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand so even though we are living in uncertain times um it's comforting to know that we are all in this together um, being that it is a global pandemic Really, the only way that we can all get through this is by working together, by putting aside all our differences, by really truly loving your neighbor. Um, and that message on its own is, is so important right now when um, out in the world it could be chaos, um, there's so much fear and anxiety. Um, but just taking the time to make sure that your neighbor is okay with whether that neighbor being your actual neighbor or um, somebody that you encounter at work um, or just somebody in the store that needs a hand um, it's really important for us to be able to go through this together um, another message that i think god is teaching us um, in in the midst of um, social distancing and all this is to um, pursue a closer walk with God um, and in this time where we're in our own homes um, 
we really have the opportunity to be closer to God and be closer to those um, that we share a home with um, and be closer with um, with our families and to just reconnect in the most um, in the most basic way but in 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 a way that we really haven't connected in a long time um, and to also just be more in touch with nature to to realize that there's beauty around us there are things that we haven't appreciated in a long time because we've been busy going back and forth to stores malls and all these man-made things but we had the opportunity to travel um, to arizona before um, the lockdown happened and just to behold the beauty of god's creation it was it was uh, made us speechless really um, out there were so peaceful and all you could really hear is, is your own thoughts. It makes it um, easier to hear what God is saying to you. So just want to take this time to really listen to what God is saying to all of us. Um, and that I'm thankful for this church community that continues to 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 be together in the midst of all of this. Um, thank you all. And we are praying for all of your health and safety. Love, Gerald, Janelle, and Hedwig. Hi, Pastor Nova. This is the message I thought I'd pass on to you uh, for, the, for the congregation and, and you who's listening. Through the years when I've been faced with a troubling situation, there usually is a hymn that comes to my mind and keeps coming back to me several times. That hymn is, God will take care of you. The first verse, be not dismayed, whate'er betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. I feel this is something for us to take comfort in at this very serious time around us. Psalm 46 is a... a, a Psalm for, Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble is also something to remember every day. May God take care of each and every one of you. God bless. Love, Evelyn. Bye-bye.
morning, church. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 20 to 21. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves a little while until the wrath has passed. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will reveal her bloodshed and will no longer conceal her slain. We are at a very difficult and sad time, not only as a nation, but globally as well. The anxiety of everyone is apparent everywhere you look. The reality is that we have been selfish and we have not been grateful for the abundant blessings that surrounded us before. The freedom to do whatever we please is gone now. We took for granted the simple pleasures that is free for all, such as the having the joy of spending time together as a community. I think this is God's way of healing us, healing the earth, telling us to slow down, telling us to take a moment and appreciate the people we love by spending more time with them and realizing how valuable life is. It is his reminder that we should look at the beauty that surrounds us amidst the darkness. Thank those that sacrifice a great deal to save the ones that are suffering. For God said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future from Jeremiah 29, 11. Church, hang in there. We miss everyone and we pray for everyone's safety and health. And just before I leave, I just wanna share with you what I've read once. And it says, I don't wanna spoil the ending but I promise you, it will be okay. Amen. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest.
weary burden, then I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, humble in heart. So Okay. Um, hi, I know this is a difficult time for everybody on many levels. Here's a prayer I found. Dear Lord, you know that we are what we're all dealing with. You know that there are things happening that are beyond our control. Please help us to accept what we can't change. Help us turn our worry time to prayer time. Help us so that these things don't steal our joy. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. We give you our stress, our disappointments, our frustrations and sadness and ask for your peace. May your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.